Hello again. In the next section, I'm going to talk about machining and the different types of machining techniques that are used in metal processing. Uh, so traditional machining would infer turning, milling, grinding, sawing and drilling. And certainly these are all used in the manufacturing of metallic medical devices. Um, but there are other types of machining as well, which I, I will go through in the next few. So I'll start with the more traditional type of uh, metal processing. And this is turning, metal turning, which is done on a lathe. Uh, so a lathe is a, it's a, a piece of apparatus that allows a, a metal piece to be worked on using cutting tools. The cutting tools are usually hardened cutting tools. Um, they're fixed to a solid or movable mounting, which is a tool post or a turret. And then this is moved against the workpiece. So the workpiece is, 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 stay, is, uh, is mounted in a chuck. Um, and the tools move up against the workpiece uh, and the workpiece is usually rotating. So hand wheels or computer controlled motors are used and it might be best if I show you a diagram. Uh, so th this is a, an image of a lathe in action. So standard lathe that you'd see in a, in a general tool room, it's a, it's a hand uh, laid. So this is, is the chuck here where you uh, mount your metal work piece that's going to be worked on. And uh, this is the tool post where you fix your cutting tools. So you move the tool post in and out to the work piece um, at the appropriate speeds and dimensions necessary. The cutting tools come in a wide range of sizes and shapes depending upon their application. Um, so there's Diamond cutting tools, round, square, triangular, and you can get an, a number of, of reasonably, uh, you know, precise, intricate shapes uh, using lathes uh, to machine metal. So, uh, in addition to this video, I have lots of supplementary YouTube videos, um, you, you know, provided by other sources on, on how lathes work and, and the other metal processing techniques that I'll talk about. So, I would refer you to watch those. A milling is another traditional type of metal processing. Again, we have a standard mill here, which you would see in, in a workroom. Um, in this instance, the metal piece is, is put on a flatbed and the cutting tool moves in a, uh, in a Y direction down onto the, um, onto the uh, metal piece and, um, and, and takes away metal. So, Turning and milling are known as metal removal techniques. Uh, so the metal is taken away by by tools to give you the required shape uh, that's needed. So we'll move on to some more advanced machining. Laser cutting is, is fast, uh, replacing uh, many other types of machining. And this is where a laser is used to cut material. There's different types of lasers, but in general, the focus laser beam is directed at the material. Uh, what this does is it melts the material, it burns it, and it vaporizes it away or it's blown away by a jet of gas. Um, so it leaves an edge with a very high quality surface finish. Um, so there's no burrs um, or you know surface striations on the metal. It's a very high quality. Um, there's reduced contamination of workpiece. Um, so there's, there's no cutting edge to the laser. Um, so you don't have a tool piece uh, up against the workpiece that could contaminate it. So uh, for, for sterile medical devices or try, trying to keep some degree of cleanliness, um, this is obviously good. The precision is obviously better. Uh, the laser beam does not wear during the process. Uh, so it, um, it doesn't need to be uh, changed as much. There's a reduced chance of warp in the material that is being cut as laser systems have a small heat affected zone and we'll talk about the heat affected zone in a moment some materials are very difficult or impossible to cut by more tradition by more traditional means um, so laser cutting as i said is fast replacing traditional means and it has a positioning accuracy of 10 microns uh, which makes it a you know a very uh, dependable machining tool to use 
Uh, so let's look at a schematic of laser cutting. So laser beam enters a, a tube, uh, is deflected and focused uh, down through a narrow nozzle. Uh, so the focused laser and gas jet is ejected through a narrow nozzle and it, this is the metal workpiece down here and it makes a cut into the workpiece uh, through heat. So there's two types of laser machining. Um, there's a melt and blow type of laser machining, which is what I've just been talking about. This is known as, as fusion laser machining. So first the material is heated to melting point. Then a gas jet blows the molten material out of the cut, avoiding the need to raise the temperature of the material any further. In ultra-fast pulse technology, then, this is also known as femtosecond technology. Um, a very high peak pulse is used. It doesn't melt the material, but it directly vaporizes it. And the resulting surface finish can measure uh, below one micron. So uh, extremely good accuracy. It's particularly advantageous for processing non-metals such as polymers. Um, so what's good about this ultra-fast pulse technology is that um, there is very little heat affected zone in the metal. Um, because it doesn't actually melt the material, it directly vaporizes it. The metal doesn't get hot. Therefore, um, there is less chance for um, property changes to happen in that piece of metal or dimensional changes because of heat. Um, so I'll just have a, a look at this for a moment. This is fusion laser cutting. Um, so th it will, this red arrow, let's imagine that that's a laser beam and it's making a cut, which is uh, this triangle here that's in white, uh, a cut onto the surface of the metal. What's in red here is the heat affected zone. Okay, and uh, and these are meant to represent, these little squiggles I have there are meant to represent um, little micro cracks that might happen as a, an effect of the heat. So in femtosecond or ultra fast uh, pulsed laser, uh, the laser is pulsed. So again, this red is a laser beam, this red arrow here, uh, but it's pulsed in femtoseconds, which is 10 to the minus 12. Uh, it makes the same depth of cut, but the heat affected zone here, this little red thing is tiny. Um, so it, it vaporizes the metal away. There's no heat affected zone. There's no micro cracks. There's no conformational changes to the structure of the metal. So the, the femtosecond pulse technology is set to, to take over. Um, I have a nice picture here of a stent being laser cut. Um, it's very fast, it's very accurate, and it leaves a great surface finish. So it really is, is the go-to method for machining stents uh, right now. I'm going to move on to abrasive water jet technology. Um, so what this is, is that um, it can process most materials from the macro to the micro scale, metals, composites, plastic, ceramics, and also laminates. So it's good for all types of materials. And that's what makes it, um, you know, attractive in the medical device manufacturing world where laser cutting may not uh, work so well with, with plastics. Um, but abrasive water jet technology will work very well with everything. Um, so there's a cold, it's a cold cutting process. So it doesn't heat, it doesn't generate a heat affected zone at all. A single water jet machine can perform an array of processing functions. So it, in, it can include cutting, drilling, turning, milling, grooving, and surface preparation without the use of special tooling. So it, it can do all the machining things that we've just talked about uh, without needing special tooling and it doesn't generate a heat affected zone. So I have an image here of a titanium bone graft through a uh, bone graft tube and it's 0.4 millimeters in thickness. So how it works, water is pumped through a high pressure valve. Um, it travels along the pressure tube into the nozzle of the water jet. And here, water is focused into a thin 
beam by a dual orifice here. The beam of water is ejected from the nozzle. It cuts through the material by spraying it with the jet of high speed water. And there are abrasives that can be added in here, um, such as garnet and aluminium oxide. And they're fed in via an abrasive inlet. The abrasive mixes with the water in a mixing tube and is forced at the end in high pressure. Um, so what you get down here then is a cut material. Um, so because it's a very simple technology. It's using um, high pressure water to make a cut in the metal. So the main benefit is the ability to cut material without interfering with its inherent structure as there is no heat affected zone. You can achieve accurate and complex shapes. It's accurate to about 0.5 millimeters uh, abrasive and 0 0.07 millimeters non-abrasive. Uh, not as good as uh, laser cutting, uh, but still quite good for a simple technology uh, that doesn't leave a heat affected zone. Uh, there's a reduced amount of scrap material produced and the water can be recycled using a closed loop system. So it is an attractive machining technique. Um, and all of these that I've talked about um, are generally computerized uh, using CNC machinery or computerized numerical controlled means CNC. So you'll hear of a CNC lathe, CNC mills. Um, so CNC is basically it's the computer that controls the process. And I showed you an example of a hand lathe. Uh, there, they would be very rare. They're really only in teaching laboratories um, or, you know, as hobby lathes. Um, in industry now, everything is CNC. It's hooked up to a machine. Uh, the coordinates are fed into the um, to the system, and and the tools move back and forth according to the coordinates that are given to it. Um, uh, and that's all. The coordinates are taken from a CAD drawing that has been um, imported into the CNC. So most of these machines are now fully automated and they use robotics for loading and unloading the machined parts. So that concludes the section on machining. So I covered the traditional methods of, of turning and milling. Uh, we looked at laser cutting and we looked at abrasive water jetting. Uh, now what I didn't look at was electrical um, discharge machining uh, it's a little section in itself I'll cover it in a supplementary section uh, of the course but for right now um, what we've covered is uh, is, is the content um, for this MOOC okay thank you